Sean, and this is First Tools and Band Talk. And we're together for the first time ever. That's my signature move, eh? I like. So hopefully this doesn't screw up too bad. Here with the mugs. Here with the mugs. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They're for sale too. So we're gonna try this. Hopefully it doesn't crash and burn. Um, before we go any further, we got a great guest here today. We're really excited about this guy. Mm -hmm. We'll introduce him in a second. Um, we did the post last night. Todd Kearns, I'm telling you folks, it's going to be exciting. Huge. Um, Tuk Talk Tuesdays, uh, Plays with Slash, um, Age of Electric. He's a legend. He's a Canadian legend, so we're excited about that. Um, but, however, really excited about this gentleman. This is a guy who needs no introduction. You will recognize him. Uh, he's a DJ with K-Rock. He does a fantastic show on East Link TV, East Link Unplugged. Or, sorry. East Coast Music Unplugged, and uh, in my opinion, um, he does great work of promoting everything East Coast, all the artists, and and just he's just a he he's a great interviewer. Uh, you can tell that he puts his his folks at the, at ease when he does it. So we're really excited to have Mr. Darren Harvey. He's going to teach us a thing or two about being professional because we're not the fuck that. So he is, and we're not. So it'll be awesome. But quite honestly, folks, it, like, it's going to be a great interview. You're going to have a great time talking to me with Darren. So we're going to bring him right on right about now. There he is. Darren Harvey, how are you, sir? I am very well. How are you guys doing? Great. And I want to first off, I want to say thank you so much for uh, getting back to us really quick. I'm excited about this. I watch your show a lot. Um, hey, thanks. East Link, I tell you, when, when we were coming up, it was Dartmouth Cable 10. That's right. You get anything from live music to a woman knitting in a corner, <laughs> listening to Harry Hips tunes. It's come a long way. You know what I'm it, talking about. It has. It has. On the same show. <laughs> you did a little, you did a little <laughs> promo for us. You did a little promo for us. And the part that we left out, say what you said, because it was hilarious. Well, uh, uh, about the fact that you guys had the drummer for Sticks on, right? Yeah. I don't know how much I'm supposed to say. Go ahead. Which sticks spectacular, but Jesus Christ, he was in Spinal Tap. <laughs> the, what, tell me a more important band than Spinal Tap. Okay, you guys have to put up with my stories now because okay. you asked for this. The first time I saw U2, I'm a big U2 fan, uh, was the Zoo TV tour. Yeah. And I'm going to say, oh, I don't know, 25 plus years ago. So I bought the program because you're going to drive to Montreal, you're going to spend the money in the program. <laughs> and I still remember they asked all four members of the band the same four questions. And that was the whole program with all these pictures. And one of the questions was, when was the last time you cried? And the edge said, the last time I cried was when I watched Spinal Tap. Because it's all true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I believe that, man. Like, it's madness, right? It Every is. single thing. Every spot of that girlfriend. Ours goes to 11. You know, the, the whole cucumber. It's all, everything. It's all true. It's weird. I eh? know. I know. I really want to see that movie. I got I to spark that up this weekend or something. Yeah. I haven't seen that. You know what? Under it inspired me, too. <laughs> it is yeah, let's do it. How, how much it's like Seinfeld in that if you if you do a reference to that movie, everybody knows. Well, especially musicians knows yeah. exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Especially musicians you know, you just make the, the observation once. Well, this one goes to 11. Yeah. And everyone's like, yeah, well, there you go. You know, golf Darren, clap. It's Darren, I want to know, listen, are we doing Stonehenge tonight? <laughs> <laughs> and down comes Stonehenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is actually history. This is the first time Sean actually, and I have been in the same room doing an interview. So we're in a little bubble of, of Dartmouth, I guess. And you're in your bubble cool. of the valley. So that's kind of cool. But it tell is. us how you got started in this crazy business yourself. Oh, boy. Well, um, I like to say, and this is technically true, so right. let me finish. Uh, not that you've interrupted me yet. I have been doing this since the 80s. Okay? My first radio shift was Christmas Eve 1989. And so, you know, about six days away from the end of the decade, but it counts. 
and I was still in college going to, to NSCC for broadcasting. And I got a job working Christmas Eve because they couldn't get anyone else. And that's sort of how it started, working at AVR. And then I kind of always dabbled in some TV and stuff. Uh, K-Rock came along that opportunity 12 years ago. And then eight years ago, my pal Brian Lynch, we've been friends since high school. He's the regional manager of programming, I think is his title. He, um, he said, uh, they want me to do an East Coast music show and I want you to host it. Cool. I was that lucky. Like, you know, I was just that lucky. And, and he knows that I see a lot of live music. I consume a lot of live music. So I wasn't going into it cold. It wasn't like, you know, we want you to do a cooking show. It, it wasn't that. So, um, and I think, I think I was the right guy. I don't know that I'm the best guy, but I, no, I'm certainly not the best guy. But he, he thought I was the right guy. Well, I digress. I, I think you are the best guy because, like I said, I watched that show a lot. And uh, one of my favorite interviews that you did was with Adam Baldwin. Um, yeah. So guy that plays keyboards with me, Lee Fleming Smith, plays with Adam, plays with uh, Matt Mays. Um, I know Adam not well, but I know him enough that every time we play, he gets up and he jams. Adam is a uh, bouncing off the walls. You can't keep him in one place. He looked very, very, very comfortable. Um, and it was a great interview. Oh, good. Yeah. You know, like anything, and, and you guys are learning this and, and you know it, um, just go into an interview ready. You know, a good lawyer will tell you, don't ask any questions you don't know the answer to before you ask it. And that's sort of what I do. So I take about uh, eight hours to prepare for a 30 minute show, which after commercials is about 22 minutes of programming, which after you take the music in there, it's about 18, 18 minutes of programming. So take about eight hours to prepare for that. My wife does a whole lot of prep for me too, because she can speak in my voice, in my head. So she knows what like Darren would say. And between the two of us, I, I just, I, I know everything about the artist going in. Adam was an easy one. I mean, we're all fans, uh, but yeah, you just know what you're talking about. And, and I, that's the goal. I'm, that's very, that's a great compliment. You would say that is to put somebody at ease and then you get, you know, sincere, thoughtful answers. And, and then you've got a good show and nice people like you will watch the show, which I appreciate because to be perfectly honest, Eastlink hate that I talk about this. I don't have Eastlink. It's not available. I live too far in the woods. <laughs> we well, won't tell anybody, okay? But that's yeah. great. So now I just learned something now because I thought the whole thing we did so far to prepare for an interview and put our guests at ease was drink and swear. That's what I thought the whole concept was. So. Oh. That's, doing that's wrong, a, though, well, you do a much better show than I do. <laughs> <laughs> that goes without saying. That's so what I'm giving. Um, well, and, and my point about Adam is that he'll get up and jam. You got to tell him five times where the guitar cable is to plug it in. He's that <laughs> ADD when you're talking to him. But that interview, he was very laid back. He, and uh, I even saw him, I don't know, maybe a month or two after that. And I said, Adam, I've never actually seen you that chill on that laid back so i mean compliments to you for for being able wow to that is a great compliment and i appreciate that man that's that's something uh all i can say is i'm a big fan of his and and he knows it and you know that's really all you have to do nobody wants you know all the rookie questions um carlton stone paid me one of the highest compliments of, of my career he said that my interview with him was the best and he said it was because you didn't ask the question, what comes first, the lyrics or the music? Right. <laughs> and, and, you know, I said to Carlton, that's not a bad question in context of, you know, I was on an airplane and this melody just hit me and uh, I couldn't get the melody out of my head and the words came six months later. That's a bad example. And you say, so is it always that way? Is it melody first? Hmm. But it's kind of a lazy question to ask a songwriter. If you really want to get into songwriting, let them tell you somehow. So yeah, just I don't know. Guess you know what you're talking about when you go in and it makes people happy. And well, and I tell you, I, I've I've always had this fear. And when we interviewed Todd Zuckerman, I said it to him before he went on the Chris Farley skit when he was interviewing Paul McCartney on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> That's my biggest fear. Uh, hey Todd, <laughs> you play with Tommy Shaw. Uh -huh. cool. <laughs> right and so but he was not right 
Uh, but that's 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 always been my biggest fear. But one of the things, and hopefully you, I would say you find this, is you're talking to the folks. It's less an interview and more a conversation. Yeah, and that's you just exactly, shoot in the breeze. That's exactly it. Have you ever seen the Elvis Costello show Spectacle? Yes, sir. It's one of my favorite TV shows of all time. It's one of the only shows I've ever bought the, the Blu-rays for. Um, when I say that to you, things are going to start to tick here. East Coast Music Unplugged is based largely on that, right down to me holding a clipboard like Elvis Costello. Right. It's, it's um, a wannabe hack musician in my case, and Elvis's case, it's a Grammy award-winning genius. It's a musician talking to a musician about music. And we don't nerd out all the time talking about, you know, this model guitar is better than this model guitar, but I can, I mean, if you want. Yeah. And so it's just really lovely to get into it, like with people like that. And also a lot of these people I have known for a lot of years, every season has had a little bit of, of nepotism of people that I have known a long, long time that I just want on the show sure. and I get them. Well, let's be honest, Darren, for, for a lot of folks, I mean, we're not giving them their 15 minutes of fame. They had tons of fame. Oh, yeah. If anything, maybe we're, some of them are reliving it a little bit. They've been inactive for a little while. Certainly during all this COVID shit, it's just nice to talk about it. And Sean and I, our concept was, and it's very much like yours too, a conversation. Ours was set into a bar. If we were sitting in a bar having a beer, this is the kind of shit that we would talk about. You know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And the other thing that you guys might not think about that you're doing is you're giving people a long form interview that honestly 99 times out of a hundred people are looking for a sound bite. They need this much. And what you're doing and what I hope I'm doing is the antithesis of the people that run up with their, with their phone and go, I just need 30 seconds. I just need 30 seconds. And yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's longer form. And that's what I tell people when I'm setting up, feel, don't feel you have to kill time but take your time yeah. and answer the questions thoughtfully and you don't have to go boom, boom, boom. I'll be at the Carlton Saturday night at eight. You know, take your time. It's a good point. Cause when we uh, were lining up Liberty DeVito, we were talking to his manager and we finally get it lined up. Yeah. Liberty's got 15 minutes for you. Yeah. And we're like the whole time we want to be respectful. We started interviewing. He's like, I got off. So we ended up getting about a little over an hour. His manager sends us an email five minutes after it's done saying, we've done a thousand of these. He's had such a good time. Uh, Richie and Russell, who played with Billy Joel, want to come on the show. Would you guys yeah. enter entertain it? Andy, can I get back to you? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where's my, where's yeah. my fucking clipboard? I got to check my schedule. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm going to do for you, kid? I'm going to work him into my schedule for you. Because <laughs> I like you, kid. I like you. Um, stay gold, yeah. morning, boy, stay gold. <laughs> so, so a question that I have, because I, I watch the show a lot. So you guys shoot it where? Well, it's funny. We shoot it usually wherever the ECMAs are. We build a studio. So okay. if they're in PEI, because we shoot it all during ECMA week, because that's where the musicians are. Right. So sometimes we shoot three, four shows a day. Um, one time six, which was, I think, the East Link record. Uh, that was a, that was a longish day when you're shooting... And, um, you know, we have, it's, it's quite a production. There's pretty girls running around doing my makeup. They got to cover this big bald head and stuff. And after every sh show, they would come in and tilt my head down and powder my shiny head. <laughs> when I remember when we did six shows, when I came home and, and showered, it was just brown water coming off me, man. It was just unpleasant. Yeah, we shoot at the ECMAs and it's an easy way to get everybody uh, together at once. Right. I, I, I can relate to the uh, brown water because that's what happens when I dye my hair. So a uh, little secret out of the barn there, Darren. Oh, um, oh. Props to your, uh, the folks that do the show and do the set because I had no idea that's how you did it. And it looks consistently the same every time. That drum kit in the back looks like the same every time. It's amazing. And do they work? Well, <laughs> Brian, yeah. Brian Lynch, who's the, the executive producer of the show and, and the, the regional uh, director, he's a drummer and a great drummer. Right. So I th think that's a rental. He usually just goes to Long and McQuaid and rents a bunch of gear for the background, but um, he would know because like, he knows everything. Right. Uh, so I'm not surprised that the, at least the drums part is consistent. And I don't know if you've ever noticed, but there's, um, there's usually lava lamps somewhere yeah. on the set. 
Um, that's an homage to Paul McCartney. He's a crazy Beatles fan. And Paul always has lava lamps on his stage. So that's a little secret homage, which I don't think I've ever told anybody before. We just draw shit out of people is what we do, Darren. We just never know what you're going to tell us, right? Nice. So listen, you've been doing this 8 to 12 years. Now, maybe this is a stupid question. I guess I shouldn't have asked, but I don't care because I've never watched any interview shows before. Favorite interview? What's your favorite interview you have done? Um, oh, well, see, I've got to talk to some really big people. Uh, I'm a wannabe harmonica player, and I got to meet James Cotton from Muddy Waters Band a number of times when he was at Dutch. And that just meant a lot to me, but it wasn't a recorded interview. It's just something that I have. Uh, same with Neil Young, John Prine. Um, I interviewed the drummer for Bad Company, Simon, uh, and that was pretty cool. He was really nice and paid me a really nice compliment. On the TV show, you know, the first interview I did for the first season was Charlie Acourt. And uh, he's just so incredibly sweet. It's hard to pick a favorite because I have friends in here. Right. You know, like uh, Ian James and Tara Spencer, like we're personal friends. We, we go to dinner, we hang out. Um, but, you know, Dave Gunning, I'll fight anybody who wants to fight me on this. Dave Gunning is the nicest guy in Canadian music. Okay. Like Dave Gunning is the guy who literally, if he gets there for setup, will help you carry gear. All right. Like there's zero, zero diva. Not that I saw a lot of diva, but, you know, he's so nice. And uh, my, my ego needs inflating. And, and he, like you nice people have indicated, he watches the show um, and he really knew what we, we were going to do. And he's just super, super nice. Everybody has been nice, though. There has been zero diva so far. Nice. Okay, so I'll throw, and, and I won't name names, and Dave's not going to name names. <laughs> he's a, what do you do when you get a tough interview? So, and, and I'll, I'll might, let, put it to you this way. You're interviewing somebody. They're clearly having a bad day. They're not into it. It's like pulling teeth. What have you done to maybe get over the hump to get something that's usable or interesting that people would want to see? Well, 31 years in radio, my wife and I were trying to think about this. We think I've done about 2,000 interviews. Wow. So uh, it's called uh, verbal tracking. Never take your eyes off the ball. If you don't think you're going to have enough questions, which it rarely happens to me because I over prepare, um, whatever the last thing they said, build off it somehow. Right build off it somehow find something and sometimes you're grasping at straws but that really hasn't happened to me because we do so much prep ahead of time like people are brought in and the first thing that happens is some beautiful girl sits them in a chair and puts makeup on them and talks to them for a while and then we sit them down and we set lighting and I talk to them and pre-interview them and I get a little you know a little more and a little more and you're furiously writing on that paper so you know over prepare and uh, it just doesn't happen much much but um I, I guess when it happens try to build off the last thing that was said and uh i've got a i've got a guy in my ear all the time saying two minutes man two minutes two minutes yeah and i i guess at the end of the day people like to talk about themselves so if you can find something about themselves that they like i guess you're gonna you're gonna get something decent out of them yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I think what right. we need really now is more makeup and more pretty girls. That's what I'm hearing. Well, that's just absolutely true in life. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I like the way you think. I want to subscribe to your newsletter. I'm in. Yes. A newsletter. That's a good idea. I just remembered something that I want to ask you guys. You ask your next question. I've got questions for you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Suddenly we have nothing to say. <laughs> shoot, shoot. Uh, gosh, I, I'm not. He's got his own. No, I'm done. No, I'm, 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 I'm ready. Yeah, give her. Okay, cool. So if you've watched the show, uh, we end the show with the um, the questions that I get to ask everybody. The quick six. Yes. And I'm trying to find the quick six. So I have the exact verbiage, although I got them, I think, in my head. Um, I'm going to – okay. Uh, now, let's start – Dave? Yes. I'm going to start with you. You start first, okay? 
uh, whether on your phone or your computer or good old fashioned LPs, CDs, what are some of your most listened to artists right now this week? This week would be Sweet, Beatles, and well, we're working on some songs for this little band we have, so that's stuff too. Band, stuff that I'm working on, but it's always Sweet and Beatles right now. Okay, week. I'm just going to go left, right, left, right. Okay. Favorite Canadian artist, favorite Atlantic Canadian artist. Nice. Favorite Canadian artist for me is very simple and uh, it would be Darby Mills because she really put us on the ballot. Okay. This. Love her to death. She's awesome. Favorite uh, East Coast artist? I'd have to say probably Leith Fleming Smith. Very good. Um, where is your happy place? My happy place is right here on this screen with you right now, Darren Harvey. All right. My happy place. What is your favorite inanimate object? And I think I know the answer to this. <laughs> it would it would be my Lars Ulrich Signature Series drumsticks that I tape the Lars Ulrich thing up because I don't even want anybody to know that I use them, but they get me through an awful lot. Okay. I, say, I thought there would be drums, but yeah. Okay, good. Um, and uh, let's say if you weren't a musician, you would be a... Super fan. Fair ball. That's abs That's the best... That's one of the best answers I've ever had to that question. Let's fucking roll here, Darren. Yeah. That is really good. And if heaven exists, when you arrive at the pearly gates, what music is playing? <laughs> See, this, this is the one that always stumps people. Um, I would have to say in honor of Eddie Van Halen, who passed away, would have to be something Eddie Van Halen. And I think it would be Eddie Van Halen jamming with John Bonham. Okay. Nice. You know what my Van Halen um, jam is? And there's many, and I've been a fan since day one. And, and, and some purists really turn their, their, um, their nose up at this. Uh, Dreams, Van Hagar. Absolutely. I love that song. Yeah. I love that song, man. It's, you know, it's, it's funny when uh, we talk about this on Facebook all the time. So somebody will say, like, I'm a huge Kiss fan. Matt Mays and I got in this huge debate. I love Love Gun. It's my favorite album. He's like rock and roll over. And he actually got me over to, you know what? I think you're right. It's rock and roll over. But when you put it on social media and, Somebody says, oh, uh, 5150, no way. And it's like, it means something to you. So who gives, right. uh, you know what, with somebody else right. Said, right? Exactly. And it's adorable because you're both wrong. It's Destroyer. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't record. get me started. Holy mackerel. <laughs> and suddenly the interview's over. Click. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Darren, you're working so, on the Have you always lived in the Valley or no? Yeah, pretty much. I was born in Windsor in the old hospital, and I lived – in the woods, again, I grew up in the woods on a dirt road, and now I live on a road that's partially paved and the other end is dirt. But yeah, this is where I, I've always lived and worked. Well, how cool is that? Because a lot of people on radio, it's almost like working for a bank or the Armed Forces. You have to go all over the place. We had a gentleman by the name of Junior LeClerc who was on the show that started out Q107. Junior's a great fan. Junior was all over the country yeah. and yeah. finally wound up back in Toronto where he's living now. Uh, but that's what you typically hear. Um, yeah, it is WKRP very thing, right? I, you have to travel, and I've been blessed that I, I haven't or didn't. Um, but, you know, I, I was uh, asked to leave. You know, I was fired. And uh, instead of just moving on, I stayed here and, and did some straight jobs and did some TV. And uh, then the, the K-Rock opportunity came up, and, I, you know, I, of course, pounced on it. I, I was all over them, and it just I've, just, I've been very lucky. You know, that's a common theme, Darren. I'm going to jump in for a second because I hear that from a lot of the artists that we talk to, a lot of the industry professionals, a lot of the folks who are successful. Uh, Russell Brennan from Music Stop saying, I was lucky, I was lucky, I was lucky, I was blessed. And I, and I get it, but there's more to it than that because you obviously did the work ahead of time. You were professional. You were you were effective. So I, I appreciate what you're saying with, with the luck and, and the blessed part of it. But you know what? You obviously did the work and you have a following. People love you. We, we know that about you. So, Well, you know, my best friend since I'm 12 years old, Derek, uh, Derek Parker, shout out to Derek. Um, he always, he hates luck. He's very much a scientific mind. And he says, luck prepares the, fa luck favors the prepared mind. Hmm. Yeah. So he dismisses exactly. luck with that little sentence. And, and I think he's, I think he's very right. I think yeah. he's very right. Well, and further that, I mean, normally Dave's the, uh, the butt kisser on the show. So I'll take put a little bit of a twist on it, but I, I wouldn't say you would have 
your typical radio voice, but your oh, no. personality and you put people like to me, your, your personality that um, I, I see the show, uh, I've, I've heard you when I'm down the Valley. Um, you're kind of like, uh, you're not the overpowering, like the way that you talk now, radio guys to me, they put on their voice on the show and then you hear them and it's like, that's not you. You don't sound anything. You know what I mean? Like you just kind of go and do your gig and, and, and make it work. Right. No, I'm not blessed with that big, Hey everybody, get the fuck out of bed. <laughs> I, I just, that's never, I'm never going to do that. I can't do that. Gee, I get this Lord. nasally drone. I got a deviated septum. There's only so much air getting in there. So um, this is what I got. So you better bring some personality because I don't have, uh, I, I just don't have it. <laughs> You're selling it right there. So let's go, let's go back to you here. I don't know if we'll get a full six here, but uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if anybody's ever put you to, to this. So, um, oh God, favorite Canadian and favorite East Coast artist. Well, it changes every day, but favorite Canadian would would go somewhere between uh, maybe the tragically hip and Neil Young this week. Favorite Atlantic Canadian artist this week, only because I'm obsessed with her new song is Tara Spencer. Uh, the song Lunenberg Moon is is absolutely epic. It is one of, it's one of the best things I've heard in so long. Um, I want that song to get published so much. I honestly think if Jimmy Buffett heard it, he'd record it. Wow. Well, favorite inanimate object? G my Gibson B25. <laughs> I, I, my, I got a 63 Gibson B25 that was gifted to me by one of my favorite songwriters in the world. And it's weird that it's even in my house. So who would your dream interview be? be? Uh, you're not going to do the living or dead thing, are you? Nope. Just whoever. If you, if there's one person that you can interview of anybody, who would it be? Forgive me, him. Um, well, that's good. Yeah, that's very good. Um, I'm, I'm obsessed with Stevie Ray Vaughan. So if we could do the, the, the dead thing, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan would be my guy. Uh, I, like I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm, I'm gonna take you for a walk now. Can we do that and make your yeah, 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 yeah. We love seeing shit. Okay, all right. So if we go over here to the Stevie Ray Vaughan wall, let me see. Oh wow! Holy shit! <laughs> That's a big poster. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh over here is an unopened copy of Texas Flood. Uh, underneath oh. is every record he ever made, and there's the the live record, and oh. yeah, there's a lot. Now that said, there's no there's no shortage of Lennon. I don't know if you can see that's a Beatles print. So yeah, no print. Stevie Ray, Stevie Ray, my friend. Can I give you mine? Yes, please. Because a lot of people, I, I beat up on bass players a lot on the show, but uh, and we're working on this, and we've got some ins. But my dream interview would be with Nikki Six from Motley Crue. Nikki Six would have amazing stories. Good God, he would, and. Uh, I know some people that have had the opportunity. Good, good friend of ours has been on the show, Mark Horton. He used to uh, road manage Theory of a Dead Man, and he did the crew fest with him. And he said, Nikki Six is absolutely brilliant. And I knew it. So that's that's one we're working on right now, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get him. Oh, man, that would be wicked if you got that. That would be so good. God, I hope you get that. Well, if we do, you're coming on with us. How's that? Because oh, <laughs> we, need, we need somebody to actually ask a real, for, yeah. real question. <laughs> You guys need my help like you need a hole in the head. But uh, are we running out of time? I'm worried we're running out of time. No, we need, we need three more questions. And I, I didn't really pay attention to the, to the quick six, so we did three. Uh, I'll just make one up. Uh, what is, what's been your favorite concert? I saw Stevie Ray twice. Oh, I knew you were going to say that one besides Stevie Ray, okay? Um, the, the, uh, well, the first time I saw John Prine or the last time I saw John Prine. Both meant the same amount. The last time I saw John Prine, it was magical. He was like a, a man a third his age. He literally put his guitar down like he was at a campfire and danced around it like this. Um, and I'm a really crazy John Prine fan. Um, so those two shows really meant a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, I've I've been fortunate. Uh, we saw Stevie Ray. Uh, we saw Stevie Wonder in Atlanta years ago, and as a hack harmonica player, yeah. when he pulled out that chromatic, I was just tears. I was just a wreck, man. And and it was it was amazing. And and you know, you're in Atlanta and you're seeing you know a oh. master. You're seeing a legend. 
the music there is Stevie great. Wonder, Stevie Ray, John Prine. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot. So if you've ever, ever interviewed anybody that you were like, geez, I just don't want to talk to this person. And then you do, and they wound up being probably, they totally surprised you and floored you. Yes, but probably not musicians. Because when I interview a musician, um, I go, like I say, I go into it super over prepared and you sort of get a sense of what, always watch old interviews. That's what I do. And then you kind of get a, a sense of what they're going to be like. So, but because I've worked in radio for so long, I've interviewed just like a lot of community members. And um, I don't know if either of you are old enough to remember this, but do you remember the Slinky ad? Slinky, Slinky, yeah. wonderful, wonderful toy. I interviewed the woman that oh, sang boy. that song because her husband invented the Slinky. Wow. And yeah, and um, she was absolutely delightful. So, so there. <laughs> All right, I got the last question. Right, here it is. Where can people find your shit now? If you do have anything that we can help you promote at all now, Darren? Well, it's, it's, a, it's an exclusive on Eastlink, but what I can do, if you have Eastlink, that's where you're gonna see it, Eastlink 10 and HD 610. I do a morning show on 893K Rock, which is 893krock.com. And I'm there 550 to 950 Monday to Friday. But what I can do for you guys, since you were cool enough to have me on the show, is I will give you the first exclusive of the entire season that you know just debut we've had one show air and i'll tell you everybody who's on keontae beals kicked it off Dwayne andrews from pei do you know him yes sir yeah. as a monster uh rachel beck who i adore i was a fan of her when she was with her sister uh dave carroll uh outstanding <laughs> had a little bit of success um rachel cousins we got alan Silliboy on this season uh, my pal Mark Riley from down here in the Valley, who I performed with a hundred times, Alicia Toner, Kim Dunn, Russell Gross, Coco Love Alcorn, who um, she is from Atlanta, Canada. All her family are here, but because we had to do this season much like this, we had to do it on a on a Zoom. Uh, I was able to get her at her home in Owen Sound, Ontario, and we got uh, a founding member of April Wine, Jim Henman, on nice. the show. Yeah. who's a, a buddy of mine and I've known for a long time and I, I got to play with and um, he just cold called me one day and said I've got a new video I'd like to be on your show what do you say oh I don't know I've got a whole bunch of people in the Juno Hall of Fame that would like to be on my show <laughs> but uh, again I'll make time we're stalking Miles Goodwin in the same way and we're gonna wear him down to come on the show so nice well you know what you do <laughs> is ask Jim because he's sense. super accessible and he still plays with Miles. He sees him all the time. So that'd be your in. Yeah, yeah. Jim's a good guy. Um, so we're going to wrap because uh, I know you're busy and we're going to do some rehearsal tonight. But uh, I want to thank you for coming on because, like I say, I watch your show all the time. Um, love your style. Love what you do. Um, I think it's, you know, and, and I learned a lot about some of the stuff that you guys put together, which is, which is amazing. Um, and we got we to gotta get together sometime and have a, have a couple wobbly pops or something. I like the way you think. Yeah, you're really good at that shit. That's our that's our specialty, right? Now. Yeah, I'm I'm not saying I'm a professional, but the only because once stick you go me, pro, stick with me. Yeah, you can't go once you go pro. You can't go back to the amateur ranks. That's the only that's reason right. I haven't gone pro. You Dave, know. Dave found Dave found a way though. He found a way to do it, so he can give you lessons on that too. Plug your nose. Thanks so much, Darren. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, guys. You're a delight. Thanks. It was really fun. Yeah, it was fun having you on here, brother. We really, really appreciate it. Seriously. Cool. I appreciate you guys. Thanks. All right. Peace, brother. Peace, Peace love. Love, man. You take care. All right.